Welcome to the Audio Fundamentals course. This is adapted from a college course in audio that I taught a couple years ago, and I have a couple goals for it. First, I want to help you organize information about audio into a useful framework, and second, I want this to be a grown-up approach for beginners. In other words, something that doesn't expect that you know a lot about audio, but that doesn't talk down to you. Portions of this course are based on a book called The Craft of Controlling Sound by Dr. Stephen Solom. They are used with permission. First, let's look at some structural concepts. The first one is that a lack of information is not usually the problem. There's information everywhere. Really, the problem is to organize information in context. For example, when you're learning new things, the articles or the people that you're talking to are going to assume that you already know the words they're using. Also, if you're trying to make something work, if you're putting together a system, you want to know where to look first so you don't waste your time. It's also important to have an understanding of what's realistic to accomplish in audio and what's not. I can't tell you how often I've gone into a large retail store that sells musical equipment having done my research and talked to a salesperson who really doesn't know anything. So this will help arm you against those situations. And finally, a place for everything and everything in its place, that's what that stands for, and relevance. You want to be able to fit in new information that you learn into a framework that you already have. The second structural concept is that learning new things is not always straightforward. It usually requires revisiting old subjects in a spiral. And about a spiral, in his book, Steve Solom tells an analogy of his father building a limestone wall around their house. And he could have just built the front first, but then he couldn't have built the other sides because limestone has to be laid one stone, one layer at a time. So it ended up taking him 15 years of going around and around and around the house one layer at a time in order to make the nice limestone wall that they have then. So with that in mind, this, this series of videos is going to spend a lot of time on building the foundation. Another thing is that it's helpful to take a beginner's attitude even if you have experience. Even though I've taught audio for over 10 years, I don't know everything there is to know about it. I'm still learning a lot more. No matter how much you know, there will still be more to learn about it. It's helpful to organize your concepts by leaving out some of the details at first. Let's look at our first nuts and bolts concept. This is something that many of you are probably already familiar with, but let's go over it just to be sure. It's called the three worlds of sound. You'll also hear these described as three domains of sound. The first one is the acoustic world, and this is the world that our ears live in. This is where sound is made through vibrations in the air. For centuries, that was the only world that sound existed in. Then in the late 1800s, we began to see the analog world of sound. This is where sound waves are represented in some sort of physical medium, or in the more advanced ways, a magnetic medium, such as cassette tapes or reel-to-reel -reel tapes. In the digital world, the third of the three worlds, sound is represented as numbers. Now it's important to know those three worlds so that you don't get lost. You want to know which world you're in at any given time, at what place in an audio setup. You need to know which world you want to be in in order to accomplish the next thing that you want to do. And you want to know how to move the sound from one world to another. The next concept we'll talk about briefly is the technology curve. This is an exponential curve uh, where if you take prehistory on the left, the, the dawn of human civilization, and the current time on the right, we've got vocals, we've got percussion, we've got cave people feeding on logs, not the most sophisticated musical technology. By the time you get closer to the Middle Ages, uh, some early Greek stuff, you've got various string and brass instruments. Right around the turn of the 19th to 20th century, you've got the invention of analog, wax cylinders, wire recorders, eventually magnetic tape, all of which provide more and more power to the sound artist. Until the 70s, 80s or so though, you didn't see much digital, but now it's ubiquitous, you see it everywhere. And digital gives you a ton of power to do things with sound. While you do get more power as you go further up the curve, you also need to know more about what you're doing. 
However, on the other hand, again, having more technology also means you need less physical skill. You don't need to sit and practice it, but you do need more mental knowledge. The one advantage is that you can use technology from any point on this curve now. You don't have to use all digital stuff. You can go and busk with an acoustic guitar on the street if you feel like it. And you could record it with a digital recorder and then manipulate it and do cool stuff with it. So that's the nice thing about technology. We haven't forgotten all the stuff from before. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, please leave comments if you have uh, questions or if you have things you'd like me for sure to cover. And I look forward to doing several more of these videos. Thanks.